Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into Stuck on You. We're diving into episode seven. We've only got two episodes left. I just finished reacting to episode six, and I had so many feelings, child. I had feelings, and I felt so bad for Reb in the end. But then he had that little moment there where he thought he was using his inside voice, but he most certainly wasn't. He's like, I think I love you. And I'm like, ooh, baby, baby, baby. Mm. Ooh. So we are just going to dive in and see. We're just going to dive in and see where this goes. shit. <laughs> So, pinapanan mo ako matulog. Sabi, ikaw ah, kalmahan mo lang. Masyadong marupok. See, these moments were so sweet, too. And the affection was there. The ge it's, it's genuine affection. It's just... They were on two separate wavelengths. Girl, it's only been a week, a little over a week. God, it feels like so long ago since I watched the first episode and we were doing the whole mask thing. Binigyan mo lang ako ng kape at nag-thank you ako. Anong right moment nun? Hindi ka nagagalit. Hindi ko naman kailangan i-acknowledge yung sinabi ko eh. Look, maka nahaliw ka lang kasi araw-araw ba naman tayo magkasama eh? Like some weird Stockholm Syndrome thing? Hindi mo naman ako pinilap eh. So ano? Tago ko na lang ba to? Hindi ko na lang ba papansinin yung mga nararamdaman ko? Mag-pretend na lang ako na okay ako sa sitwasyon natin? Ano ba? Hey, it's been less than two weeks. <laughs> Hindi ito fairy tale, okay? Totong buhay ito. Ano akala mo? That we'd fall in love in that short period of time just because we're stuck together? I mean, you don't have to yell at me. How love works. We're here because we're in quarantine, okay? Okay, but you don't have to yell at me. Okay, rude. 
Just because you don't know how to process your feeling doesn't mean you have to invalidate mine, sir. Sir. Ang tukbo naman kasi eh. Sinabi na nga ng tao na companion ka lang. Masa ka naman. Nalikang ka lang. See, and that's why I... Mahal ka na. Fuck. That's why I said he needed not to say that who knows thing at the end of the last episode. Because he put that idea in his head. Totoo naman eh. Nalakdown lang naman kami. Wala lang. Parang peace, wala lang. Uh -huh. Who says that? I love you from the get-go. Hi, Gina. na nakikita na lang naman ako dito, di ba? Hindi hey, naman yun yung gusto kong sabihin eh. Hindi ko alam, JM eh. Kasi lately parang mali ata yung mga basa ko sa kilos at galaw mo eh. Doon na lang muna ako sa personal space ko ah. Look, you're not just someone I'm stuck in quarantine with, okay? Okay. You're... Ano? Rose, my... Rose, my friend. Pero ba, yung isipin na wala akong pakilam sa... I guess. I care about you. And I enjoy spending time with you. Pero... Look, ang ganda lang yun eh. Sorry kung... Parang tungo ko sa'yo na pinaasa kita. You should be. I planted that whole... We'll see, I think. Wala ka naman. What? He's just not ready. Not ready. Hindi pa ako handa sa kahit anong relasyon. Hindi pa ako ready mag-boyfriend, girlfriend, or any sort of relationship for that matter. Akala ko naintindihan mo yun eh. Akala ko lang talaga kasi there was something there. I guess I was wrong. Ito walang kasi ako, hindi ako makapaniwala na pag I love you ako agad. That he wasted his first kiss. Pero, if okay lang, can I be alone for a bit? Yung balik na lang tayo sa kanya-kanya nating personal space. Yung may schedule na lang yung lahat. And, GM, pag nagkataon na nakikita tayo or nagkasabay, hindi na lang ako pansinin ha. Pretend ka na lang na hindi mo ako nakikita. Okay? Baby. Please. Okay, sige. Somebody needs to hug this boy. I'm a kid. is breaking for him. Somebody needs to hug him. See, this right here, it's exactly what I was saying. He's built this up in his head so much. To him, this was that moment that he had been waiting for for pretty much his whole life. And to JM, it was a Tuesday. Hashtag Street, Re Street Fighter reference. Or did he say Thursday in the movie? So for some reason, Tuesday feels right. I like that song too. So, uh, lang, go ahead. Uh, uh, never mind, sorry.
see, it sucks because I understand both of them, and like, you can, yes, you can visibly see JM is upset. He's sorry that he hurt Rev's feelings, but at the same time, like, he can't force himself to be ready to be in love. Like, Sis, patawag ka? Wala lang. Namumusta lang. Kasi, mang, mang napasarap ka na dyan sa 14-day lockdown turned Road to Forever movie. I'm so over it. Gusto ko nang umuwi. Oh! Uy, a- ano nangyari? Eh, nakapagsulat ka pa nga ng bagong kanta, which I assume it's all about him, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Wala yun. Ididelete ko na yun. Baka makita pa niya. Wala namang true love. Baka nga tama si JM. Mas mabuti nang mag-isa para hindi ka nalang nasasaktan. Mm, baby, you can't have my mentality. Ang downer, ha? Rinig mo ba yung sarili mo, sis? Hindi ikaw yan. Ang nega. Ang nega. Sis, 14 days. 14 days lang nag-I love you na ako. Hindi ko alam kung hopeless romantic lang ba ako or idealistic eh. Ewan? Hopeless romantic? Oh, oh, idealistic. Mm, definitely. Dagdag mo na rin dyan yung optimistic. And alam mo sis, pwede mo rin naman panghawakan yung mga pinaniniwalaan mo while still managing to be realistic. Oh my God, ang galing ko! Wait. <laughs> Romantic, idealistic, optimistic, realistic. Oh, hindi lang naman pala ko yung songwriter nito. Say, you say you the song, hey, Sis, first kiss ko siya. Sabi ko, hihintayin ko yung tamang tao eh. I wanted the moment to be special. Sis, special pa rin naman, di ba? Yung circumstances nyo, hindi naman ordinary. Tsaka, sa totoo lang ah, ilang tao pa talaga yung nakatuluyan nila yung first kiss nila? Hmm. Kaya, cheer up ka na, sis. Huwag ka na mapaka-jaded, Diyos ko. Yeah, but else, I wouldn't want to be with my first kiss. O siya, sige, baka masunod na yung niluluto ko. Bye! Bye. Ay, makasi. Sabi ko nang kalmahan mo lang, bigla ka naman bumigay. <laughs> Baby. Quarantine time is almost done. Girl? Okay ka lang? Okay lang ako. Huwag mo na akong pansinin. Tulungan na kita. Hindi. Okay lang ako. Ito ko na lang ako kumain, okay? Dilinisin ko na to. Mo, Sinabi na nga okay ako eh. Alam mo na nga ako. I'm just trying to help. Hindi mo ka nga sumigaw. Trying to help? This is exactly the kind of thing that made me think we had the slightest bit of chance. Hey guys, ganyan ba? Ganyan ka ba ka-desperado for love? Oh child, let's not have this conversation. Have the whole conversation. day, dispeto ko lahat ng gusto mo. Hindi nga kita ginulo eh. Sinakyan ko pa yung mga trip mo. Even with the whole pretending you're not here bullshit. And here I'm just trying to be helpful? Tapos sasabihin mo sa akin, I'm actively trying to make you fall for me? Taka ka ba? Child. Wow. Tanga. Hindi ko alam kung bakit ko pa naisip na I could ever have feelings for you. Well, I Isang araw na lang naman, JM, but I hope you don't mind. I don't ever want to speak to you again. Okay? Uh, 
Um, everybody in this show getting their feelings too hurt and worked up easily, Lord. Sabi ko naman sa'yo, di ba? Dapat kagabi pa ako umuwi. Pwede mo manimik ka muna? So ano ako, si Daniel, tapos ikaw si Catherine. <laughs> Hindi tayo Katniel. Hindi tayo magjowa. At lalong wala tayong happy ending. Obviously, tinignan mo yung laman ng cabinet ko. At pinakilaman mo yung mga gamit ko. Yung mga gamit ko nakatago for a reason. You really, really want to kiss you. Tapos bukas sa umaga, hindi mo na maalala yung nangyari. Pili kang kita ulit. Ako na. Kako na. I mean, as long as you realize what it was that you were doing, it's a step in the right direction. Oh, that's too damn complicated. I'm sorry kasi nasaktan kita. Saktan. Parang kasalanan ko naman. Girl, don't you... Don't... Don't... Mm, don't do it. And then he's gonna walk in when he's trying to apologize and it's gonna open up this whole... Ah... Uh, I can't look. Um, Reb, I like you, but. But? I don't Reb? Reb, okay ka lang? Uh. Ang kalawa mo? Gahanap lang ako ng, ng mga gamit. Oh Lord, don't have a panic attack. Oh Lord. Subukan eh. Tinray kong ilaban. Pero hindi na kita kayang makita sa future ko. Mas nabibigay niya yung atensyon. Hinakit ko. Ah, she hard. Mas iniintindi niya ako. Kinoconsider niya yung Felix ko. Alam mo ba, buong buhay ko, ikaw lang lagi yung pinoconsider ko. Lahat na gusto mo, sinusunod ko. 
Che, eh, ngayon ko lang susundin yung totoong maligayahan ko. So please, let me be happy. The box literally says, do not open! Ang hili mo makilang na gamit na may gamit, no? You just can't stop yourself from meddling people's lives, no? And here, I was thinking na kailangan akong mag-apologize sa'yo for what I said earlier and how I treated you. Ano mo ka-deserve mo naman yata lahat yun, eh? No, Rick. You've done enough. Jane, I don't know. Sorry. I'm sorry kasi hinayan pa kitang nag-stay nito sa bahay ko eh. Kung hinayan na lang kita tumambay doon sa barangay hall, agang matapos nung putang ay na-lockdown to, hindi sana I never had to deal with this shit. I don't need any of this drama. I don't need anyone in my life. I don't need you and your stupid feelings! Hindi mo sinasadya eh. Hindi mo sinasadya? Hindi mo sinasadya to go to my private things and break my stuff? Ganun ba? Bigla na lang nahulog yung box, ganun? You didn't mean to shove your feelings down my throat? And guilt trip me for not living up to the fantasies you made up in your head? Ganun ba? Hindi mo sinasadya lahat? True love's kiss? Choke. Don't be wrong, my exhaust me. Speak up mo kung may gusto kong sabihin sa akin. Ikaw ba unang umalik sa akin, J.M.? Kung unang umalik sa akin, hinalikan mo ako. Walang pumilit sa'yo. I didn't need you to. Kasalanan mo lahat ng ito eh. Simula ito lahat sa'yo. So don't blame me for having these stupid feelings since I'm allowed to feel like shit. Baby. Tsaka yung magiging nice mo. It's not just the fact that you're doing what you're doing, okay? How do you do it? Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but for your own sake, you can only do it for yourself. You say one thing and you act the complete opposite. So you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Not your unrealistic perception of love, no? Tsaka baka nakakalimutan mo. Lasing tayong pareho. That case, didn't mean anything. Oo ha. Salamat. Salamat at ginising mo na rin ako sa katotohan. You're so fucking hot, OJM! You can't love anyone, not even yourself, kasi wala naman naman yung puso mo kundi galit. For once, I finally agree with you that my doubts are not the only thing positive. Because I really thought that you could be more than just an angry person. That you could be capable of love. I'm not even sure. Nothing but an empty shell of what Aliya left of you. I hate you. I mean, okay, sure, fine. We'll we'll go we'll go down this route, I guess. Y'all, I need alcohol. 
That's where y'all can end the fucking episode, Jesus. I didn't expect this series to make me feel these kind of feelings. I didn't expect this series to get to me like this. Because I know, I know once you guys wanted me to start reacting to, um, crap, what am I reacting to nowadays? I'm so just all over the place. Um, once you guys wanted me to start reacting to Until We Meet Again, it's because you guys wanted me to feel all the feels, and you guys wanted me to cry and get emotional and all that kind of stuff, and you guys said that in the comment section over and over and over again. That's that's one of the main reasons you guys wanted me to watch it. A, because it's a great show, but B, because y'all wanted to see me get emotional, y'all wanted to see me cry and all that kind of stuff. And, and watching that series, and a lot of the other series I've been watching recently, like, yeah, there have been these emotional elements, and I can appreciate them, and I can re not really relate to them, but I can appreciate them, and I can empathize with them, and I can see the emotional weight that they have, but they haven't driven me to that point where I feel like wanting to cry or something like that. Like, I might get a little teary-eyed or something like that but like I, I've not been driven to that point watching those series yet to the point that I'm like oh my god I just feel like I want to cry and I'm holding this stuff back um, and not saying that anything's wrong with those series or there's anything that they're doing bad no that those series are amazing they are so amazing but like I said I can understand the feelings that are going on there and I can empathize with them but I don't really necessarily relate to those situations yet. Fingers crossed I don't have to. Um, but the the series that like tend to like really just make me overly emotional or emotionally sensitive are those that where yes we have these sad moments, we have these arguments, we have these fights, we have all this kind of stuff but they're grounded in reality in the sense that I they're relatable to me. I've been through scenarios that relate to me in this sense. So like watching um, I Told Sunset About You and me getting hella emotional in certain places, me watching other certain series and getting hella emotional, it's like it's a cathartic release in a sense. So here that's very much what this episode was. This episode and I did not expect this series to take me on these, this kind of an emotional roller coaster because it started off as this light, f fun, you know, opposites attract kind of being stuck together and, you know, we're going to make this work kind of vibe. And yeah, they built these connections and this sort of romance developed and then, you know, mixed signals went on and, you know, feelings got hurt and whatnot. Okay, cool, that's fine. But like, <sighs> that last scene... Like, there's so many times where I'm just like, I can't look, I can't look, I can't look, oh my god. Like, there's just so much uncomfortableness that was happening, and then the arguing, and the back and forth, just the way, the, A, the acting, so good, so fucking good, oh my god, such good, real, raw, honest, just commitment to these scenes, and getting the flashback of... JM and Aaliyah and that whole breakup oh my god that's just like like you can see again I don't know exactly what it was that drove Aaliyah to say that you know she can't see him in her future anymore I don't know what it was that happened between them but obviously like they've been having some sort of issues for a while and she found somebody else who made her happy um, and she just needed to leave the situation but just seeing JM's response and just oh, heartbreaking so then having that channel back into present day and you know feeling all these feelings 
of having his personal space invaded and you know having his private things violated blah 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 which again I was sitting here like Reb don't do this don't do this because you, you know you know better um, but just that whole back and forth between them and like I feel like it's because I understand where both of them are coming from and I vocalized that throughout the last couple reactions where it's like I get it I get where Reb is coming from because I've lived that hopeless romantic life and building up this fantasy in my head and making a big deal out of every little thing. I get it. I understand where it's coming from and I also know how it feels to have someone in a sense do things that lead you on even if it wasn't their intention to lead you on still to get led on and to live in that fantasy because of the things and the ways that pe certain people are treating you. I know that feeling. I know that hurt. I. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. So I get where he's coming from, but at the same time, I get where JM's coming from. Like I said in the last reaction, I think it was, where, you know, he's just looking for this sense of comfort and he's just not ready. Sure, he might have some sort of feelings for Reb, but he's not ready ready to dive into a relationship. He's not ready to dive into, you know, these feelings and whatnot. He's still healing. He just got on a path where he's starting to heal, but he still has a ways to go and you can't just rush these sort of things. So it's like, while yes, I feel bad for Reb for getting, you know, getting his feelings hurt and for, you know, getting let on in a sense and then having you know that whole fantasy come crashing down i also feel for jm in the sense where it's like you can't yes he feels certain th certain things for reb and yes he feels sorry that he hurt reb but he can't force himself to be ready he can't be ready immediately just to appease reb just to apologize to reb and whatnot so it's it's this it's this back and forth duality thing and I'm like, oh gosh, I get both sides of the spectrum and it's so hard to just be like in this middle ground between them. But yeah, it's just the fighting between the two of them and just everything that was being said and then Reb, you know, just saying, well, you know, this isn't my fault. You kissed me. You, you did this. Like, yes, I might build up this fantasy in my head yes I might be this hopeless romantic and yes I might have all these idealistic ideas of love that may not be very realistic but still at the end of the day you did this I did not ask you to do this I did not ask you I was perfectly fine with the layout that we had I was perfectly fine with the relationship we had the friendship whatever the fuck we had I was fine with that I did not ask you to kiss me. I did not ask you to treat me. It's not that you're just, it's not just that you're treating me nicely or you're treating me kindly. It's the way that you're doing it. And all of a sudden this switch flipped and all of a sudden we are all cuddly, wuddly and a big couple and whatnot. I did not ask you for these things. I did not ask you for a kiss. I did not ask you for cuddles. I did not ask you to act like my boyfriend. I did not ask you for any of these things. You did this. You did this and not it's not completely fair to say that all the blame goes on JM because JM doesn't have control over how we don't have control how other people feel about us yes there are certain things that we can do that might contribute to those feelings but we don't have control over how people feel so like we can't blame JM completely for it but JM is in large part responsible for building up these ideas in his head. He laid a lot of groundwork that would very easily lead someone like Reb who has not been in a relationship. That this is the thing this is like the key difference that I just don't think is really clicking in JM's head. It's not that Reb just has this idealistic, you know, fairy tale thought process about love in his head. It's just he has never done this he has never been in love he's never been in a relationship he does not know what it's like this is his first time for everything so pair that with the fact that yes he does have that sort of hopeless romantic mentality and he is thinking that this first time this first love is that big true first love not realizing that you know a lot of people 
they fall in and out of love and they go through very many relationships in life before they find someone if they find someone who is that special one or whatever for them like just because you fall in love doesn't mean that that's your forever love doesn't mean that that's a person that you're supposed to be with forever so Reb doesn't know that he hasn't lived that yet he JM, yes, he's lived that. He's ex had to experience that heartache and whatnot, unfortunately. But Reb, he's not lived through that yet. So Reb does not understand that that sort of mentality that that J. They're just in different places. They're in different places, and I don't think that JM always recognizes or realizes that some of Reb's mentality is just naivety. It's, it's naive. He just hasn't experienced things yet. He's experiencing things for the first time with JM and this is just how things, this is just how things are going. So, just the calm, the back and forth between the two of them, it just, it was so intense and I thought Rev was on the verge of a panic attack. Like I've, I thought that was going to happen. I'm like, please don't let this happen. We can't have another panic attack while JM is upset at you because I don't know that JM is going to be in your corner to try and comfort you right now because he is terribly upset at this whole scenario that's going on down here. So I'm glad that the panic attack didn't didn't happen. But Lord, just that entire conversation, it, it was making me emotional. Like I was tearing up so bad and having to just hold things back and just hold... Ugh. so emotional and then i get where it went i understand where it went you know we were at this big climactic passionate moment where all of these emotions were getting out we're getting out all this anger at each other and that climactic passion just turns into mm, i get it i get the idea of it was i necessarily expecting it no do i necessarily think that it needed to go that route no, I would. I was very content wallowing in these sad feelings and basking in this just awkward ambience that they set with this arguing. And I was very fine with them leaving it on this negative plane for right now for this episode and things being resolved in the next episode. Um, so do I think it needed to cross into this sort of cliched Oh, we're angry at each other. We're angry at each other. Oh, I'm so angry at you. Anger turns into making out. No, I don't think it needed to go there. Am I upset that it went there? No, it's fine. We have to wait and see where episode, the last episode goes. But yeah, I don't think it needed to cross into that. But I understand the trope, the cliche. I understand where that's going. Um, and yeah, so we've got one episode left and we've just got to wait and see how the pieces fall. Is this passionate make out session or whatever that they're about to embark on just throws in the heat of passion or is it actually going to lead to civilized conversation and some form of resolution i don't know i don't know i don't know we just gotta wait and see but that's a conversation for another day in any event, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications so you'll be notified when all my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. Mwah. And before you guys go, a shout out to my amazing patrons. I can't begin to express how thankful I am for your support. And if you guys would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. I love you guys.